Ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha, and I wanted to take some time to discuss asset flips, what they are, and more importantly, what they are not. And the reason why I wanted to do this is threefold. The first is to hopefully better educate viewers on what it means to be an asset flip and also at the same time to help reassure indie developers who happen to utilize bought assets to help make their lives easier or to fill gaps in their development knowledge that they might have. I also have discussed this particular topic in other videos in the past, but I wanted a standalone video that focuses on this topic that people can refer to in the future. So before we can define what an asset flip is not, we first have to define what an asset flip is, or rather what it actually means, and not what the current perception of an asset flip is or how the definition has been conflated into being. Now, Asset flip is a term that comes from house flipping, although far less work is put into it than house flipping. House flipping is the practice of purchasing a property, making minimal cosmetic improvements to the property, then selling it again for a large profit in a very short period of time. By extension, asset flipping is the act of either illegally obtaining or purchasing a base game package from the game engine's asset store, and then slapping your own logo onto it and then placing it for sale on Steam which only requires the $100 Steam Direct payment to accomplish. The practice of asset flipping has in the past been widely utilized as a method of gray market profiteering where the goal of asset flips were to make money through a couple of different vectors all at the same time. The first was commonly due to Steam trading cards, where card-bought farmers would quote-unquote play the game in order to generate Steam trading cards that could then be converted into gems, which would then allow those owning the bot farms to generate booster packs for higher value games and then trade them on the Steam marketplace or on other gray market sites. Also generating gift games that could also be sold on gray market sites such as G2A. The asset flipper would also generate hundreds of thousands of review code keys that they then sell to bot farmers on gray market sites and would also engage in bot farming activities themselves. And a lot of these practices still take place to this day. However, Valve have done their best to sweep this actively under the rug and remove visibility of these asset flips on the Steam storefront and only seldomly remove asset flips in large sweeps of the platform. An excellent past example of genuine asset flips and this gray market activity was Ata Berdiev, and his developer and sock puppet developer accounts had produced over a dozen such projects, and as you can see on your screen, this is what it means to be an asset flip, where even the game trailer is a direct copy of the trailer produced by the actual asset's creator for use as an advertisement on the game engine storefronts. And one interesting component of this is the simple fact that while asset flipping is extremely unethical, it is not actually illegal as long as they legitimately purchase the assets from the storefront. That purchase provides them license to use the assets in part or in whole in their own game projects and there is no requirement for alterations being made. Digital Homicide is another more infamous example of rampant asset flipping where their vitriol had led them to filing a spurious lawsuit against Jim Sterling for over $15 million and also attempting to sue over 100 Steam users who were critical of their products. The lawsuits both ultimately failed and Digital Homicide were booted from Steam by Valve for their activities. And many of the Digital Homicide asset flips posted to the then Steam Greenlight were direct asset flips or were asset flips where they had shifted the position of the camera angle in order to obfuscate that they were uploading the same game package more than once and attempting to sell them as separate games. And then there was also Silicon Echo, who had generated in a very short period of time over 170 asset flips over a large number of Sock Puppet accounts. At one point, Silicon Echo accounted for over 10% of all games posted to Steam within a multi-month period. So as you can see, asset flips are very low-quality products that are simple re-uploads of game engine store assets such as Unity, Unreal, and others. Now, let's talk about what games have been classified as asset flips by people or developers have raised concerns regarding being labeled as such and how they are not asset flips. My first prime go-to example for this has been and will continue to be the video game Star Drop by Jour Visseur. Now, I use this as an example as way back in 2017, Jour Visseur reached out to me by email deeply concerned that his game would be labeled by gamers as an asset flip owing to the fact that all of the visual assets within the game were bought assets. Now, I purchased and played the first chapter of the game as it was still very much in active development and what I found was a game that had a compelling storyline, 
excellent voice acting and a visual game design that showed how much love and heart was put into the development of this game and prompted me to add Star Drop and Jura Visur to the list of Diamond devs. Now, in addition, it is a game that provides prospective buyers a bloody demo on Steam. Now, how often do you see that these days? Now, this is a person that showed genuine passion for the game he was creating, and it showed at every aspect I could find. While it was still buggy at that time, it was a thoroughly enjoyable game and well worth the asking price in my mind. However, there are a great many people that would label this game as an asset flip due to its reliance on bought assets. We were also provided a second example recently due to an email received by Big Fry TV concerning the game Zero Hour, an indie first-person shooter, where that email reads, There is a chance Zero Hour might be a bit of an asset flip where they showed the link to a video that is no longer available, they continued with, I thought this might be important to show you because the devs never said anything about reusing things from packs, and I myself felt a bit misled after spending over 300 hours on this game, and I thought you'd like to get a deeper look into it. Which Big Fry TV correctly pointed out that if you enjoyed the game so much that you invested over 300 hours into a $10 game, or $12 game, then who cares if they use bought assets? And when we look at the Steam page, we see that 84% of the over 15,000 user reviews for the game were positive, and the game itself looks to be a very solid first-person shooter that only costs 12 bucks. And if they manage to garner that much positive feedback in a very flooded FPS genre market, then M7 Productions and Atrito are obviously doing something right and producing some high-quality work for an inexpensive game. Now, the simple fact of the matter is, neither of these games classify as an asset flip by simple virtue of what they have done with the bot assets that they use. Now, remember, by virtue of this person's inaccurate interpretation of what an asset flip is, PUBG itself would classify as nothing more than an asset flip as the vast majority of assets within PUBG are bought, or at least they were at the time I last critiqued an action of the developers. And that particular action was a lawsuit the PUBG developers filed against the Chinese corporation NetEase over their mobile games Knives Out and Rules of Survival, where I simply stated that if you develop your game entirely from bought assets, don't be surprised if another company develops a clone by using the same bought assets, also granting them a license to use those assets within their game by the original creators. Ultimately, games such as Zero Hour, Star Drop, and yes, even PUBG are very much not asset flips. As much as I hold a personal dislike for PUBG, each of those games, including PUBG, were able to take bought assets and still craft a game that people find to be engaging and enjoyable to play. In the case of Star Drop and Zero Hour, one can tell that these indie developers are passionate about their game and about crafting a well-made game to provide to people. That vastly distances them from the concept of an asset flip because they are not low or zero effort products. They have been crafted with care, and in some cases meticulously so. So much so that one person invested over 300 hours into the game before finding out that they used bought assets. The fact that that player was unaware shows that those developers have invested a great deal of blood, sweat, and tears into their game. They showed passion and dedication, and such developers should not be condemned for utilizing bought assets, especially when the end product is so far removed from the concept of an asset flip. They should be praised for releasing a quality game at a reasonable price and should be further encouraged to continue their work and to make money while doing so. And a special note to developers. Don't be afraid to utilize bought assets in your game. Just take care to make sure you use them well and that they improve the game and allow you to craft something unique and enjoyable and can help allow that passion that you have for creating to shine through. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha, and I'll see you next time.